Hello everyone. Uh, been a while since I made a lost foam casting video, um, but the uh, weather's turning to be uh, late fall, heading into winter here, and I usually spend a lot more time in the shop when that comes around. So I figured I'd uh, make a video of a project since I haven't done that in a while. I've cast a few things, but uh, this time um, I'm going to make a oval air filter for the inline carburetors that I do a lot of projects with. Um, I used to make these filters that you see the castings of here on my pin router and all these wooden uh, um, templates you see in the background here were actually templates for my pin router and uh, you can see my other videos if you want to uh, um, explore pin routing uh, foam patterns but uh, over the course of time I used to use uh, a standard K&N filter that I bought for about 15 years and uh, K&N obsoleted that on me with no replacement. So I had to come up with another filter and that filter is slightly different in dimensions. So the gland dimensions need to uh, grow about uh, an eighth of an inch uh, all the way around. This is the new filter and I figured while I was at it, um, I'd convert it over to being a CNC part since that's how I make most of my patterns now. So that's what this video is about, is uh, uh, making a new CNC uh, foam pattern uh, to use the new size filter element um, on my oval filters. So uh, stay tuned here and we'll take you through the steps. But uh, first I'll show you a little bit of footage um, of the patterns being cut uh, on my uh, CNC router. Um, I'll try to uh, edit that down so it's not, not too long, but you'll get the idea. And then we'll step back here and you can take a look uh, with me at the uh, byproduct of that CNC routing process. So speak soon. All right, well, since this is about uh, conversion to CNC machine patterns, um, some of you have asked about seeing the machining process, but uh, watching the CNC machine do a tool, tool pass is kind of like watching paint dry, but I'll show you a few excerpts from each operation. Um, here I've just done the first operation on the top side of the filter base. These are actually um, holes for the registration pegs and I've got uh, those into the wasteboard here and you'll see uh, I put a couple 3 8 dowels uh, in there and then uh, I've got these little 3 quarter inch dowels on, on top that slide on and slide off and then uh, these four holes then just mount on those dowels and that's how I get the registration uh, for uh, the top and bottom machining. So it's it's just simple 2.5D machining. All you got to do is get it uh, registered accurately and everything comes out just fine. So, uh, And I just use uh, clear packing tape to hold the styrofoam to the wasteboard because the machining forces are, are so low it doesn't really require anything else. So uh, let's get on with the rest of the operations. <laughs>
So you saw some of the uh, footage of the actual tool paths and uh, cutting the patterns and here we have uh, the results of that uh, CNC work. Um, there's of course the base and the lid. This is uh, here in the square frames exactly how they come off the uh, CNC router. Um, I haven't touched them since then but you can see they're they're held in there with around the perimeter with uh, uh, holding tabs. Same thing with the center cores. I just cut these out of uh, one inch thick um, polystyrene insulation board. Um, it's uh, um, uh, Foamular 150. It's an Owens Corning uh, product. I've got another video on foam pattern materials if you're interested in pattern materials. But uh, here's the base and you can see the filter gland uh, on this side here. Um, and then uh, the lid, which you can see the ornamental features on the lid. Same thing, holding tabs around the perimeter. And then um, some reliefs, you know, in the interior and the filter gland um, around the perimeter um, of the part. So I just take a razor knife and, and cut the tabs and cut them out of there. And then um, I do sand the patterns a little bit. And here's a couple of the patterns that I've rubbed on a little bit with 220 grit sandpaper. And you can see, I mean, it, it improves the finish of them quite a bit. Um, and it really doesn't take much time, just a couple of swipes with your hand and they look a lot better. But uh, here's the base. And then similarly, uh, here's the lid on, on all that. So I've got a little detailing to do on them. And a couple other things uh, you probably can't see, but they're a little bowed. You know, and you can see it deflecting there. Same thing with the, with the base. And um, that's because just whenever you cut uh, these foam boards, it's just almost like when you cut a thick build of, of aluminum or metal. You know, if you don't stress relieve the metal, sometimes they relax a little bit. Well, there's residual stresses in the foam. Not too worried about that because when I uh, put the gating on them, I'll actually hold them flat. And the gating, when I gate them, they'll be uh, gated together like this and I'll hold them flat in position. And when the gating is glued in place, it'll help hold them flat. And uh, even if they aren't, you know, these are such thin wall, they're only 3 16 wall um, castings. Uh, and in their as cast state, they're, they're, uh, they're very soft and I can basically just push them around and do whatever I want with them. So if they should happen to need straightening, um, afterwards, I could do that, but uh, you know, foam patterns are fragile. But by the time I get these gated, which you'll see in the next excerpt here, um, they're actually uh, fairly stiff. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, re rejoin the discussion here after I have uh, uh, at least one of these uh, gated, ready to pour, and uh, I think you'll see what I mean. Talk then. So back with you. I've got the. Uh, Patterns all detailed and gated up, and they're basically ready for the next step in the process, but I thought I'd show them to you. Um, I made my gating uh, just in this profile right here that you see. So these uh, thin ends here are the same width as what they contact the patterns all the way along the length of them. And that also makes it a little easier to degate de them because then I can, I can table saw through the very thin section um, of the gating. And uh, there are a couple little details that you probably can't see very well, but I added these little embossments. Um, you'll see them when I get done with the uh, casting, but they are actually added uh, right here on top of these crossbars. Um, but uh, added those to each of the, uh, the patterns. And uh, I also pre-make spruce stock. I, I add the spruce stock um, after I dip them because they're kind of fragile with them on there. So I just glue those on uh, right before I get ready to, to cast them. But uh, maybe just to show you a couple of the other little details uh, here, I did put in one little brace support here. You see where my finger is? That just supports uh, the uh, patterns, keeps them nice and flat. When I glued them together, I weighted them um, on this flat surface. So that bow I was talking about in the previous uh, uh, discussion that's gone now. They're flat and they're pretty stiff and you can kind of see the same thing up here. Even though it looks like it's another um, feed to the pattern, which it is, it's really there to make it sturdier. Um, so when I dip them, it just has uh, more strength and less likely to break. And then if you look 
Inside here, you can see I actually attached them in the center. There's a little boss there at the end of my finger that actually connects the two sides together. But uh, other than that, um, you can see that the white polystyrene is the feed system and uh, the uh, pink stuff is the actual pattern. I use the white one for the contrast. It kind of helps in these videos, but also the uh, white polystyrene is very low density. So uh, it takes less energy to evaporate. And uh, in my mind anyway, I think it means that the metal um, progresses farther down the feed system before it starts ingressing um, into the pattern. Whether that actually happens or not, I don't know, but it probably couldn't hurt on that. But uh, anyway, the next step uh, in the process will be I dip them in a bucket of soapy water. Um, it's just a little bit of Dawn dishwashing soap in water because um, the uh, propylene glycol in the dishwashing detergent is a surfactant and that helps the refractory coating that I dip them in lay down nice and smooth on the surface without um, uh, any air bubbles on that. And then I just go ahead and dip them um, in the refractory coating, which I'll show you next. This little chunk of wood is just on the end here, so I have something to hang on to it by because I try to dip them from both ends. Um, the, the styrofoam is very buoyant um, in the refractory coating, and there's quite a force it takes to push them down, so I try to make the places where I hang on to them to dip them sturdy so I don't damage or break the pattern when I dip them. And then you'll see here, just I mean, it only takes me a few seconds to plunge them and dip them into the slurry. And then I just hang them by uh, the uh, screw here on top and let them drip dry, and uh, they're ready to go after that. So uh, I'll probably show you a, a quick dip in the refractory coating, and then we'll get on with uh, casting them. All right, everyone, well, it's time for the dip coating. It's a pretty uneventful thing. This sounds literally like what I just described. So plunge it into the vat. A little more than halfway. Let that happen a couple of times. Get everything mostly coated. Let some of it drip off here. See if I can do it without making a total mess. Get the top half. These things get pretty heavy after you dip them, so try to handle them carefully. Yep, and that's pretty much it. I'll just let it drip dry for a while and we'll take her from there. We'll have a, I'll show you what they look like after they drip and dry off. See you soon. Well, hi everyone, back with you. Uh, got the patterns uh, dip coated and they're dried. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of things here, but uh, it's the usual, you know, kind of result. I got a uh, nice uniform refractory coating uh, on there. Everything turned out well. Um, one thing I will comment, comment on, I mentioned uh, how heavy these things get when you initially dip them. And I put these pieces on here for handling and whatnot. Even with all that, I still almost broke this one. I don't know if you can see that little crack right there. But handling it down here by this end, it was so heavy. And I have a pretty good lever arm here. I almost broke it. And if this were up here on the feed side, I might dig it out and fix it. But given that it's down here pretty much right at the end of where it attaches. Um, I think it'll be fine um, on that. I'm gonna cast it as is. The only other thing I need to do to these um, before I cast them is I cut the little wooden block off here and I'll cut the little uh, plug that I glued on for the hanging plug off. And then when I actually put them uh, in the flask and vibrate and pack them, um, I'll glue the uh, sprue on as kind of the last step right before I finish packing it. And uh, I'm not going to go through and include in the video all the steps that I, I do um, to vibratory pack them in my flasks. If I make every video that I make a step-by-step how-to of every process, the videos just get too long and I wouldn't want to watch them. I try to keep them under a half hour. But if you're interested in um, my, my molding rig and how I um, pack them, um, you can take a look at the other videos um, at my channel, and there's plenty of examples of that. 
but uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, mold these up and cast them and then uh, well I might degate them and we'll have a look at the castings afterwards. Stay tuned. All right well I did the final skim metals at temperature it's time for the pour. All right, well, seemed good. We'll see what we've got when I demold. Well, I'm back with you, everyone, and uh, I've covered a bit of ground since the uh, last excerpt, but um, I did degate them um, on the table saw, like I said. I put them on edge and set the rip fence, and you can see there I was able to cut down the skinny part of that uh, long gate that ran down the, the whole length of them there. So. Those are laying in the background, and of course I cut the uh, um, sprue and the Y off first before I did that. And then um, I took them over to the mill and uh, I trimmed off what uh, little was left where the gates were touched so they were nice and consistent and smooth. And after I did that, I took them to my media blasting cabinet and gave them um, a media blast with some fine glass bead and you can see here, I mean, they, uh, they turned out pretty good. Um, you know, the, the surface finish is probably as good as about any sand casting surface finish you're ever going to get. And uh, they're good solid castings, certainly good enough for uh, an air cleaner or an air filter, if you will. And uh, same thing here, you can see the base, um, all the details, they cast through just fine, nice. So. Uh, the filter gland, um, the finish here on the filter gland is as cast and I did a test fit on the filter element and everything looks good on the fit there. So um, these are the uh, castings now. All I have to do is some finishing and detail work. I need to drill the mounting holes um, in each of them and then uh, I uh, run the, the top face uh, of the filters over uh, an abrasive belt just because it gives a bit of a contrast between the uh, as cast finish and then the raised surfaces. It's just, just a cosmetic thing. But um, I'll detail them up and uh, mount the filters in them and give you a look at the finished product and then we'll uh, wrap it up then. Thanks. Hi everyone, <clears throat> back with you to just recap, finish up the project here. Um, I. Uh, did what I said in the last video. I, I did some detailing on the castings. I uh, took and uh, used an abrasive belt uh, um, on, to finish the top of the raised surfaces here and it gives that little contrast with the uh, as cast finish. You can see it kind of sets it off a little bit. Um, did mount the filter element there. You can see how it sits in the in the filter gland um, there on the end view. And, and then uh, on the underside, the uh, captive hardware and then the captive hardware just uh, bolts to the two mounting uh, locations on the carburetor. So uh, <clears throat> they finished up pretty good. And uh, I got myself a couple of uh, cast uh, filter elements for my effort. In the background here is a project. It was actually um, another project. Uh, I've got uh, the details on it out of the foreign, but um, I converted uh, an old cross boss open plenum intake to an independent runner intake. Uh, 
to run these dual carbs on. This is my own personal system. And um, <clears throat> by the way, I make these for myself. I don't offer the uh, logo uh, filters for sale, but I do offer um, the plain ribbed ones. And I've sold a few of those to folks that want filters for their inline carburetors. And uh, the other thing is, is they're kind of a rare collectible uh, carburetor. And this is a unique induction system. So I made myself a, a clear display lid um, that uh, replaces the uh, lid on the filters because it's uh, mostly going on a display engine right now. It would be uh, definitely be a good runner, I think, but um, right now I don't have a uh, Boss 302 powered car to put it on. But uh, anyway, that kind of wraps up the project. Um, a lot of you guys uh, ask questions uh, in the video about the materials I use, the refractory coatings and whatnot. If you uh, take a look at the other videos in my channel, um, I've got specific videos on materials and coatings and, and all the processes and so on. So have a look there. If you don't find something um, that you're looking for there, usually those videos do a far better job of explaining it than I could in a reply um, posted to one of my videos. But if you don't, feel free to post away. Um, the other thing is too, is consider uh, joining the Home Foundry if you wanna learn about casting. I do lost foam casting, but all, all disciplines of casting um, are practiced there um, from hobby to pros. So um, that's www.thehomefoundry.org. And I'll put that link in um, on the finished slide here. So um, that's gonna conclude this project. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.